What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Eastern Current. Super excited about our guest tonight. But before we get into the meat of the episode, I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit about this, or just some pre-show stuff. First, let's go over our sponsors here, slash co-promoters. Not really sponsors, but but people that really believe in this this podcast and this production and, and have been helping us uh, you know, push the word out there that we're doing this. Number one is I Strike Fishing. Um, Dave and Ralph are the owners of I Strike Fishing. Just incredible guys, and they've got incredible jigs. I just actually got a bunch of prototypes in the mail today of uh, some new stuff and some new weights um, that I'm excited to get out in the water and fish. But if you haven't fished with I Strike stuff, you need to pick some up um, and, and get out there and, and try it out. The Texas I Jig is one of my favorite. I'm really excited about trying the new jailbait sheets head jig. Um, not new, it's been out for a while, but I haven't really fished it much yet. So uh, excited about that. And then AFCO, incredible gear company, um, sun shirts, hoodies, brain jackets, bibs, everything you need. They're, uh, they're a great company. And Eastern Angling, that's my guide business. I'm there. I don't sponsor me, but um, I just like to talk about it. if you want to come to North Carolina and go fishing, check out Eastern Angling and, uh, and I'd love to get on the water with you. But that's enough. Well, actually, two more things. Private Facebook group for the listeners. Um, it's Eastern Current Fishing. Check it out. It's a great way to uh, connect with other anglers in the area and other listeners, and hopefully, uh, you know, build some relationships in which you can get out in the water with uh, with some like-minded individuals. And the other one is uh, our new Patreon account. So if you really do love this podcast and want to help support us financially, um, you can give five or ten dollars a month. That enters you to win a lot of giveaways. I'm going to be doing as well as uh, some some Patreon exclusive content that I'm going to be putting out. Um, online, so I put in a ton of time. I mean, I I I should add, I need to figure out the hours, but a lot of time into this, and it's just a huge blessing and a huge help. Um, if y'all support financially, definitely don't have to. If you can't do it, um, don't do it. But if you want to, it's it's much appreciated. So um, sorry for plugging that so much lately, but you know the economy is crazy right now. I got to get money however I can. So <laughs> without me rambling too much more and regretting what I say, I'm going to bring on our guest, Mr. Joe Johnson. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. I, we were just talking pre-show about how hard it was to not hook my boat up and go fishing today. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, nice man. Day. Nice it day. It was yeah. so pretty. So, Joe, tell us um, tell us your backstory. Like, you can start out with, you know, when you're a kid or you can start out with what you're doing right now, whatever you want to do. Like, your backstory, your fishing story, your your life story, if you will. Not your I mean, full no, life story, but... <laughs> It seems like everybody talks about how they always uh, went bass fishing when they were a kid. I never did any bass fishing until about two years ago. <laughs> but, uh, when I was a kid, my parents, we lived in Raleigh when I was real small, and my parents had a, a trailer down at Anchorage Marina at Atlantic Beach, and uh -huh. my dad was a big offshore guy, so I started off catching pinfish and uh, toadfish and everything else. Yeah. So I was yeah, salt waters in my veins from early age. So then I was about 10 years old, we moved here, and got into flounder fishing with my dad he had an old uh well boat you know one of the old commercial oh, yeah. fishing with a 40 johnson on it oh and, yeah we, some guy in hubert made them i think for years so uh started fishing you know, doing a lot of flounder fishing inshore stuff here with my dad so uh that's awesome uh, yeah that's kind of got started in this whole thing that's awesome so i don't know why i'm gonna ask this but i've heard and i want to try it and i killed one the other day and forgot to clean it but an oyster toad. Have you ever eaten one? I did not eat them. I had caught them when I was little. Yeah, get trying to catch pinfish. So one of my buddies from up north, he says they're like a delicacy up there. Everyone loves oyster toads. There's a limit on them. Like really? I think you can keep three a day, but apparently they're delicious to eat. Really? A pain to clean, but really good to eat. So they're um, nasty. They're nasty. gnarly looking. I would never think it, but I guess you know. Yeah. They, right. Yeah. Don't judge like a, a book by its cover. They're like a puffer, you know. They yeah. That little breast piece on the back. I'm sure it's about just like that, but um, I'm gonna tr next time I catch a good one, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean them. And eat them. I've, I'm sure cleaning that skin's gotta suck, that slimy skin, like it's knife uh, through it. Yeah. But um, dude, when I was a kid, I, I thought it was some prehistoric monster. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and they pull hard, man. They pull hard on the road. Yeah. Ride. But so, uh, then I went to Appalachian. I went to Appalachian State and uh, got into trout fishing up there. I and see. Uh, that's my. Uh, then after school, got into offshore fishing with some guys up at Oregon Inlet. I did that for several years. So right on. Yeah, so I got a lot. I, I've done a lot of different fishing. Yeah, definitely. I'm not, not an expert at any of it, but I know a lot about a little. So that's uh, that's kind of like I am. I feel like I spread myself too thin. I've tried to do too many things, but 
Uh, so now you're you're the what is your title? The fishing manager at, at Eastern, fishing Outf- man- Eastern, Eastern Outfitters. Eastern Outfitters. Yeah, awesome. the one in Hampstead. The yeah. one in Hampstead. And where's y'all? Y'all have a store up in Jacksonville as well. In Richland, yeah, just north of Jacksonville. Okay, just north of Jacksonville. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And it's kind of weird, you know. It's kind of like almost the two stores are so different, you know, because it's such a different spot, you know. Up there, yeah. it's so trout oriented. Everything's trout fishing up there. Yeah, speckled trout fishing. Yeah, speckled trout fishing. <laughs> Brown trout yeah, up there sorry, in Jacksonville. Yeah, no, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, 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 that new river, that's an incredible trout fishery. It is. So many yeah. people get confused talking about the new river because we've got the new river up in the mountains and the new river. Yeah, and and yeah. I had a client who was like, that's really cool that you can catch rainbow trout, brown trout, <laughs> and speckled trout all in the same river. And I was like, no, 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 they're two different rivers. <laughs> So. Well, you know, it's funny. We would, I went to the Big Rock show in Nashville, and uh, Lama Glass was there for the first time. And oh, cool. We started looking at him. I'm like, hey, let me see some of your trout rods, you know, and they start pulling out all these speckle, these nine-foot speckle trout rods that you're still Oh, yeah, <laughs> steelhead rods. <laughs> they had no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, I love their stuff, man. Lama Glass has some really, yeah. really yeah. killer stuff. Um, yeah. Well, cool. So one of the big things that I want to talk to you uh-huh. about is your boat and kind of how that, you know, plays into your fishing and and what kind of fishing you do and um you've got what i would call like a true micro skiff or a badass yeah. high speed kayak one of the two yeah, yeah. Um, but but it's a tr- i would say a true micro skiff so so joe's running a why don't you tell people about your a little bit about your boat and what you fish out of i've got a uh it's the old uh gnu uh no motor zone it's a 15 foot four wow. mine's a 1899 it was a factory refurb uh, completely redone, and I've got a 9.8 Tahatsu on it. Heck yeah, so, yeah. What do you know? What that that without the trailer rolls out at weight wise? I think it's about 140 pounds. 140 pounds. That's awesome. So yeah, you so can drag, you can pull you can it across it, the sandbar. You could, yeah, you can drag it across the sandbar. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, I you would think maybe with three dudes you could do that with a flat skiff, but it no, it's <laughs> it's they're not heavy. They're a thousand pounds yeah. typically, but man, you just can't do it. The accessibility that you have from a small platform like that is is you know, incredible. So how long have you had that canoe? How long have you been fishing out of it? I've had it over a year, just over a year now. Cool. What were you uh, mostly fishing out of before um, you had the canoe? I had a 17 Jones Brothers for years. I moved, I lived in Greensboro and Raleigh for a long time. I moved back about five years ago. So okay. I moved back. I, I tried the whole kayak thing and that's, you know, it's just not for me. Yeah. I don't know. Get far enough from people, you know what I mean? Get far enough from the ramp. <laughs> right. I was looking for something I could do that sort of fishing in and get away, you know, and, and run, run a little further. Yeah. I think the, uh, the people that get away on the kayak are like, you've got to be so creative on your launching spots. Like if you're going and putting in at a, at a boat ramp with a kayak, you know, there's still some fishable stuff, but you're, you're limiting yourself. Like you got to get creative, drag it through your neighbor's yard, like right, sneak it right. through a neighborhood. Like that's the kind of that cool uh the cool stuff yeah that, that i you made a with. mistake i bought a kayak that was way too big i mean oh, it was really not even i mean it was like not even uh portable it was it really yeah. almost needed a trailer so gotcha. kind of sold that and got out of it yeah well uh well cool so let's talk about if you've got a day of fishing because i'm going to ask you questions you know about your fishing through this this boat because i feel like it's you know some people that, that want to buy a flat skiff, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a much easier price point. Not much easier, but the good news can be you'd be pricey. Yeah, but. I got this. I got this for four grand. Yeah. I mean, boat, motor, and trailer, and then the, the engine's only two years old, and the trailer was almost brand new. So yeah, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, I, I think it allows you to get that flat skiff and be able to fish like that for, at a much lower price point, which is which is awesome. So yeah, I've, I've got a forty-five pound, you know, Minn Kota Riptide on the front. I've got a you know trolling motor, and it'll. You know, almost playing it out. <laughs> I know who I'm calling now when I want to go shoot some clapper rails because I am so sick and tired of pulling my boat through, through the grass. The, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna buy a canoe just for my clapper rail trips because uh, it would cut through the grass much better. So, all right, so you have the day off. Weather's perfect. You're gonna take the canoe out. You know, the trout are biting, the redfish are biting. What are you? What is your kind of go-to um, when you go fishing? You know, you got the whole thing about the GNU is you got to kind of change your mindset. You know, you can't look at it like a skiff. And yeah. that's what I had to do. You've got to look at it as a kayak, basically, that you can get places in. And I can do about 18 to 20 miles an hour. Yeah. In. So, and you got to be careful in the ICW. You know, you get some big boats, big wakes. It can be a little hairy. So, you yeah. really got to kind of pick your spots where to go, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, I like to get the spots 
with a you know with a decent ramp and where I, I like to go places that are so shallow other people don't even want to go in there yeah yeah so that's what i'm looking for you know that i don't have to run 10 miles to get there you know run two or three miles um, definitely yeah the accessibility to be able to drag that across the sandbar or sneak in a shallow creek no one else can get in is is huge um so do you would you do you spend most of your time red fishing or trout fishing or do you kind of mix it up do some flounder fishing ah. I'm learning trout fishing more and more. I start off red fishing. You know, I had 17. I had that Jones Brothers for years. I did a lot of red fishing in that, and yeah. uh, I really was into it. And I'm just now starting. Since I started working here, honestly, I started getting in with some people that really knew how to trout fish. I never was very good at it. So yeah, yeah. But I, it's, that's it's my more, story it's a, too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a better boat for reds. Yeah, you know, definitely. Do you have a, a push pole for for that boat as well? You pull I it do. Out a little bit. I do. Sweet. I got a push pole and. I'm still learning. I, it, honestly, it's a little squirrely standing in the back of that thing. Yeah, they're uh, narrow. I, I, yeah, they're real narrow. The the no motor zone is very narrow. Now the new one they've come out with the LT10 has a wider transom. Okay. So it's a little. I think it's a little more stable in the back than mine is. And I I tried pull. I bought a 16 foot pole and it's a, really a little too long. I'm gonna, probably going to cut it down for the summer. Gotcha. And try it again. But I ended up buying a stand up paddle. Oh, sweet. I found with me, I could, by myself, I've got a grab bar, you know, like a stand-up grab bar with a rod holder on it. What I found is I can I can stand on my middle seat or I can stand on the floor, depending on what's going on, and uh -huh. paddle that by myself. I see some fish, I can kind of set it down, grab the rod, and, and yeah, start Yeah, definitely. It's a lot less to deal with when you see fish, too, as opposed to a push pole. Like, right. That's one of the hardest things when I'm pulling my boat by myself, if I say I don't have my trolling motor on or something, is... What do I do with my freaking push pole when I see a fish? I'm like, I'm like holding. What I'll do is I'll take my rod, the butt of my rod. I'll stick it through my belt loop, and let uh, my like, rod like hang flip, down like off the platform. Pallet, like flip yeah, I, I like flip pallet. And then I'll like, <laughs> I'll take the push pole and like slide it between my legs, and I try to hold it with my legs, and like get my rod out of my belt loop and try to. Yeah, I mean, it's a mess. Right, so right, right, having right. that lighter paddle would be huge. I, I mean, you couldn't do it with a skiff, but on that boat, man, and and honestly, like. When fish are spooky, when that push pull hits the oysters or hits the bottom, you'll spook fish a lot of times. A paddle, you know, I feel like it'd be a little, even a little stealthier than. Yeah, than I, a, I, I like pull. it. Yeah, so far. But I would like to be able to get higher, you know, and yeah, pull. For sure. The visibility yeah. aspect of, of that is huge. And um, how is the boats when you're standing in the middle? Are those are those uh, no motor zones pretty tippy or are they they pretty stable? Not in the middle, they're pretty stable. Okay. You know, the, you know, or wasn't it Harley Gein designed it? It's it's really pretty stable, right on. especially with one person. When you got two people and they're moving different ways, it, it can get a little hairy. Yeah. But with one person, you feel pretty confident. Right on. I, I think I've been in. I I can't remember if it was. I've been in a couple good news. I can't remember. My old roommate bought one, and I think it was a no motor zone. Um, it was. I'll tell you what, though, pulling that thing in the grass, like I was saying for the clapper rails, that thing was a dream for flood tide fishing. Yeah. I mean, you could yeah. cover water so easily and quickly and, and scoot around real nicely. Um, and that was huge. That was my favorite part about that boat. And um, it's just fun. I, I was talking about this with someone I, I recorded a podcast with a, a while ago um, who was a kayak fisherman. When you're on a smaller vessel, you bring less, you're, you're less cluttered, you're more focused on on fishing what you've got and not about like, oh, I need to change all these tackle, all this tackle out, do all this different stuff. It really makes you kind of slow down and, and fish a little bit better, I feel like. Yeah, I really do a lot with two rods. I'll do one with a gold spoon and then I'll have a top water yeah. when I'm fishing. I'll, I'll just do that. You sound like me. And that's try, try, to keep it, try to keep it simple, you know. Definitely. Maybe, maybe a soft plastic, maybe switch to a soft plastic, but I love a gold spoon, man. I, I throw that all summer <laughs> oh they're they're incredible so many people are blown away they're like a redfish will eat that and you're like yeah a redfish will crush it'll this crush it. <laughs> it'll annihilate this cold spin yeah. uh, i don't do great on it when the water's cold but once it once that water hits like 68 70 degrees they'll eat a gold spoon so i mean they'll eat it colder than that probably too i, I just haven't thrown it much in that, that yeah right water. now i probably you know i'm gonna go saturday i'll probably stick with the z man yeah. you know z or something like that or for sure yeah. um one of the things I like about a gold spoon, though, is is and the the I guess it's the Johnson with the built-in like little weedless arm, is you can fish. I mean, you can throw that thing way up into the grass and work it out, which is incredible. I mean, to me, that's an incredible bait to use around a higher tide. It's got a lot of you know water's deep, fish are more spread out, but it flashes a lot, and you can get it up in that fringe, that flooded grass. Um, what yeah. kind, what kind of areas are you throwing it in? Uh, same thing, man. Same Just thing. Up in the up in the flooded grass. I've yeah. switched to that Aqua Dream. 
Uh, I've heard a lot about the Aqua Dream. I haven't fished it. That's a sweet spoon. Yeah, it is a lot. And you can change out the hooks. That's what I really yeah. like. Yeah, that's huge. And they they've got a bunch of colors, right? Of the Aqua Dream, got a bunch of cool colors. Yeah. Right. Do you do you stip, typically just fish the actual gold spoon, or are you fish? I go with the fish? gold, and I go, I've got one with a chartreuse. He's got one with a chartreuse flash on it. I like a gold spoon with a chartreuse sticker. Sweet. I like, I like that. that one a lot. Yeah. I fish a lot of dirty water. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, but up north north topsail area and, and down south like um federal point type fort fisher that's yeah. my two two go-to spots definitely so one thing i'm jealous about my old roommate works at intercoastal angler and and you working at eastern outfitters i feel like y'all have like this ability to just always be in the know like you're just talking <laughs> to so many people coming into the shop and everyone's kind of like giving you i mean i'm like golly i should pick up like a side gig at a tackle shop because um, you got to wade through a lot. Before. I know. That's what I was about to ask. I was like, <laughs> how much of that are you taking as like, like true knowledge and how much of it? I'm sure there's your guys, you know, are like legit, but yeah, there's legit dudes. Yeah. But, but, um, working at a tackle shop and, and talking, you know, with people all the time about fishing and tackle and, um, and, and, you know, what they're doing, how has that affected your fishing and, and your time on the water? That's an interesting question, man. Um, I think what it made me almost go st- made me realize that i'll give you an example mirror lures okay every we have a huge selection of mirror lures you got and to. i swear to god there's <laughs> at least every one there somebody's told me hey man that's the one right there that's the only one that works i swear <laughs> to god man that one works the best and uh the guy that was a manager when i started here billy, billy stokes he runs the tackle shop up at yop now I'm, captain billy's like old school and this guy was in here one time and he had this white mirror lure and he said uh he said man i catch 95 percent of my fish on that lure and billy said that's because you fish it 95 percent of the time exactly <laughs> it makes me realize i mean i guess what i realized more from working here is that you uh if you find the fish if you've got something similar i mean a lot of times you know with trout fishing it uh, color will matter but yeah uh, I don't, I don't think reds are very picky at all. If they're, no, they're, they're opportunistic. In, if they're in the mood. If they're in the mood to eat. They're not shut down. They're going to eat. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> just about. Definitely. I like that, man. The the Marilua colors. It's crazy, and and you got to have so many of them. And I'm with you, man. The trout sometimes will they get will on get a color. Them. Yeah, it's there's something to it. But just because they smoked a color one day doesn't mean that they're going to smoke it the next day. I mean. Uh, having a good supply of different colored mirror lures I think is important but yeah at the same time if you just stick with like a pretty you know across the board color like a rainbow trout or a Mardi Gras or something like that that's got you know a little bit of everything that's probably your best bet or that that trout I don't know what just the trout one they call it that one with kind of the olive back yeah that seems to work in a lot of different places that'll work in darker water and clear it seems to do well everywhere for sure for sure um yeah that, that's funny man that's uh that's very true about you know this is the the one mirror this is the color this one right here <laughs> this one right here um, <laughs> don't tell it don't tell anybody <laughs> don't tell anybody but it's the secret one um what other what other lures and stuff do you see being sold a lot right now like when people come in some of your guides some of your other guys come into the shop what what is the popular what are some popular baits and lures that people are picking up this spring I think the uh, the saltwater assassins are always really yeah. strong, really strong. Uh, you know, and since I started here, this this rise of Z Man, yeah, Z Man has just blown up. Like I mean, I've devoted a, I've devoted an entire wall to Z Man now. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've got more Z Man than I got mirror lures. So, I, I mean, and, that, and 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 your sponsors, I strike have you know with their uh, with that trout eye is really blown oh, up. Yeah. Big time. They crush it. Those those jigs are incredible, man. There's a I lot got of people, people asking me about that new one, you know, the new crab one. Yeah. Oh god, I got people. I'm trying to get them. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, I just got some in the middle of the day. I haven't really fished them, and I'm excited to to play around with them. Uh, they're, anything they're that gives you a, a head up, like a like a arm. Up, or I'm, what's the word? Anything that gives you a little bit of a help for a sheep's head bite and hooking. That yeah. I cannot talk right now. Anything that helps you hook a sheep's head better is is worth it because right, they're right. hard to to hook, man, and hard to feel the bite on. So I'm real excited about that. Those two. I've hooks. never done a lot of sheep's head. I don't think I'm gonna try to get into it this summer with my son. You man. should, man. You yeah, should. I want to do it because with the flounder fishing, you know, situation. Definitely, I think that uh, too with your boat. 
uh, with it the on that side of that GNU, you could get yourself like a. The only problem with it is, is like, so I, on my skiff, when I do it, I've got to bring like six towels, and I'll put them all okay. along the edge so that I can sit up against oh, the against pilings. The um, and if and I've tried when the when it's calm and what there's when there's current, using the spot lock on the trolling motor and sitting there okay. and. Yeah. I've known. I mean, I know the fish are there, and I don't get bit when I'm on that trolling motor. When I'm, uh, and if I'm in shallow really? water, if you're sitting in deep water, but I'm talking like six, eight feet of water, running the trolling motor, trying to sit next to the pilot. I don't like that. I don't like that. I, I'm sure you can catch them like that, but like finding a good way to like protect the side of a, a canoe and maybe like I, think I could get some old carpet or something. Some old carpet or like Hang a comforter or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you get tired, you can take a little nap in the boat. But. <laughs> I've seen some guys like take PVC and put it on their like on Carolina skiffs. They'll put like a cut a cut a slit in some PVC and slide it onto the gunnel. Uh, but but finding a creative way to uh, yeah, to it'd be hard it. for me. I got a lot. Of, that's one thing about the GNU. It's got a lot of tumble home. You know, it comes yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. And really got that's what makes it stable. So that might be for sure. Might figure something out. Um, so the Z Man's one crazy thing about Z Man is like like you're saying you're you're kind of getting sucked into them as well. Is they last way longer than other baits but i buy z hands way more often than i buy other baits because i'm like a, i'm addicted to them i'm like i swing by the tackle shop i gotta buy some more yeah exactly <laughs> you know old, old school tackle guys will tell you don't put that stuff in man they, they, they put more gulp in <laughs> yeah for sure if you go i mean you can like it last too long yeah it lasts way too long the the gulp uh the gulp is definitely uh a great summer bait and the pinfish like they're starting to show up now and Little blue fish and whatnot that get so keyed in on those on those baits is. I, I fish a lot of gulp in the winter time, but I won't touch it in the summer. Yeah, I think it helps draw those bites. But the aggression when that water temp gets up, you really don't need that scent. I mean, I think it's helpful, but I really don't think you need. Redfish are so opportunistic, and and they're gonna feed if you. I'm it's a big 90% pro, I'm a big procure. I'm a big procure guy. Your, uh, what's your what's your scent? What's your favorite scent? On my spoons, I do a lot of crab, blue crab. Oh, I'll sweet. Put, I'll put blue crab on the spoons, and then uh, I like the sticky, the shrimp, that red shrimp they got, yep. and I use that on a lot of soft plastic. Yeah. I like that red shrimp because you can put it on your sandwich too if you get it <laughs> the menhaden and the, and whatnot. I'm just kidding. I don't do that. I, I need to stop using that joke. That's like the fourth time I've used that. <laughs> Not, I don't think on the podcast. Maybe on the podcast, but it's a good, uh, it's a good guide, guide. Uh, joke but and we had one of the kids that worked in here we paid him we bet him a dollar he wouldn't try the procure men hayden and he, he he put some on it wasn't on the, as disgusting as you might think it is yeah he about threw up I think. oh my gosh and i was like here's your dollar <laughs> well earned dollar you, <laughs> you stupid kid <laughs> oh man so um well cool well, let's talk a little bit about um the, the we've talked a little bit about it already but give me some of the did, I, did you just lose your lights? The light, yeah, it's on like a timer. <laughs> I don't know if it was bedtime already. <laughs> no. Can you uh, see me? Hold I can, on. Let me, I can let me see stand it. and walk yeah, yeah. Let me go walk around. You're good. You're good. It's a, it's a sensor light. I get it. Come on, light. There it is. Perfect. His, uh, for those of y'all listening to the podcast, we're sitting here talking, and all of a sudden it just went dark. And he... Uh, He's got right, sensor lights going on. What's going on? All right, so let's talk a little bit about, and you've talked about you know getting to shallow areas, but maybe what you've done through your GNU or what you feel like could be done through your GNU. What are some of the the ways that can help you access you know some some different areas and some different spots that you wouldn't typically be able to on a boat or even a kayak? I mean, like we talked about earlier, it's light enough that I don't really worry about getting stuck somewhere. I've yeah. been on a lot of bigger skiffs, and I worry about just be, having to ride a tide out or being stuck in there for three or four hours. A lot yeah. of times I can get in there, and I don't worry about being able to get out. I know I can get out and pull it across the the bar or whatever to get yeah. out. So I don't, I don't stress about it. Can you get that thing under docks for the most part? Like, Could you kind of go get up a little more sneaky on the backside of docks and kind of fish that way a little bit more yeah 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 definitely i've thought about that too like with the that, trolling I've motor the grab, i've got the grab bar but it's not it's not that high yeah, yeah i can under a lot of stuff yeah that's super cool that's uh those boats man are just there's you really need every every guy needs like eight, <laughs> eight boats yeah there's you no know, perfect boat. there's no perfect boat you need like your i need my 40 foot center console i need my 30 foot center console i need my 23 foot center console but 
Um, no, they get- you, know, you really got to be careful in this. And this one thing to say, you got to be careful, and you know, you can get in some squirrely situations in this thing. Because I've been like on the other side of New River, you know, down at the mouth, and trying to fish over there and coming back, and the wind kicks up, and you're like, holy crap! Dude. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. New River can 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 get gnarly. Yeah, Same with the lower Cape, Cape Fear. Fear. Yeah, lower Cape Fear. Yeah. I've had problem. days where I've had to go drop my clients off at Bald Head or Oak Island, and run back across the river and put my life jacket on. <laughs> And I've like called my wife and been like, hey, I'm going to call you in 20 minutes. If I don't call you in 30 minutes, call me. If I don't pick up, call the Coast Guard. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I've, ha- I've had a few days where it's been that nasty down there. And so, yeah, being careful and being smart, man. Be- like, you know, it's so quickly on a boat, things can go wrong if you're if you're being stupid. So especially That's a small cool. vessel. I'll be completely honest. I flipped that thing over in Baldhead last summer. Did you really? Was- yeah. And we uh- – Dude, we, I don't know what happened. I got caught. Uh, we were going to fall. I think we typically would have fallen over, but I got caught on my rod that was in that rod holder and it just, and it took the stern end down and ended up just pouring water pouring in. Yeah. And uh, we got it. And fortunately it was in the summertime. We were able to pull, push it up in the marsh and bail it out and uh, get back on the trolling motor. So we actually got it back to the ramp. And Did everything. it total the outboard or no? No, I got it cleaned out. I got it up to, uh, uh, what's the uh, Marine Warehouse? Yeah, they got it. Tahatsu, they got it cleaned out. It's running great now. That's awesome. So, Those little Tahatsu yeah. are beasts, man. They're total but it was beasts. A, yeah. You got to be careful in it. For yeah. sure. I know. I got a friend who uh, his skiff tied it up to a dock. Tide dropped out. Came back in. The gunnel just barely got caught under the corner of the dock as it oh, came yeah. up. Filled the and, and you know a skiff's it's so low it filled that back end up, sunk it all the way to the bottom, totaled the boat. I mean, yeah. in, in ten minutes. You know, of, of of a tide change, and so yeah, it's just and important yeah, it's to be funny. careful. I've been, and I've been trying to figure out ever since then what happened, and uh, I think what's happened on that new that no motor zone comes back, like I said, more narrow, and having a four stroke on it, the four stroke is like fifty or sixty pounds heavier than that was designed for. Yeah, so it sits a little lower in the bag. Right now, I'm gonna I'm getting ready to put a, a sandbag in the front and try okay. to. Try to kick the stern up a little higher. Not a couple more tackle boxes of mirror lures. You can go with the same. <laughs> not, not heavy. Not heavy enough. <laughs> you could get the heavy beans. You could go with the heavier yeah, ones. Yeah, <laughs> go with the fifty two. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's uh, yeah. I think that that was one of the problems with my buddies too. Like even if you had some weight up front, you could really cut through boat wakes nicely too. But when you're like by yourself with the bow up a little higher, it would yeah. pound and kind of squirrel around a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. that's cool though. Um, well, we're I'm. I'm I want to talk a little bit longer and I'm trying to do, I've, I've done some studying on my podcast and it seems like a lot of the retention is lost around like 35, 40 minutes. And so I like okay. to try to get the meat of everything in. Um, is okay. there, is there anything else that you really had on your mind that, um, that you wanted to, to talk about coming from the tackle shop or, or your side of fishing and, and kind of your perspective of things from, from Hampstead? Oh, one thing I want to talk about So you grew up here. Um, from yeah. when you were 10 on. So tell me a little yeah. bit about how the fishery here has changed um, over the past however long. I don't know how old you are, 65, 75 years old? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just have to give it to people because <laughs> everyone, I'm 28 and people think I'm 45. Like it's, it's, it's So anytime I can mess with somebody about their age. Um, I don't, you know, just the pressure. You know, The pressure is just unbelievable now compared to what it was. It's crazy. Even the past five years. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, the, just the pressure. Yeah. Uh, you know, the rise of the Carolina skiff. <laughs> and the sea hunt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. But, you know, it's kind of the other side of it is there's so much knowledge out there, you know, compared to when I was younger, man. It was like Saltwater Sportsman magazine, you know, was it. Yeah, there was no internet. You didn't yeah. have Google. There was no Google Earth. There was no internet. There was no. You know, you were lucky if some guy that knew what he was doing took you under his wing. Otherwise, it was just trial and error, you know? It's For like, sure. It's like my son now watching YouTube videos, you know? He's like light years ahead of where I was yeah. at his age, you That's know? Incredible. He can learn so much. Um, you, know? you really can learn so much. And I think that we're getting better overall at catching fish as a human race than we ever were before. I mean, with everything that that we've got as far as baits go, you know, electronics, trolling motors, like we're so much more effective than we used to be, which is causing the fish to be one, (coughs) excuse me. Uh, It's causing the fish to one, be a little bit more, you know, wiser and spookier, but also I feel like less, less fish around too. We're taking more out of the water 
Um, there's less in the water to be caught. Um, well, you know, like I said, I you know when I growing up, I never did any bass fishing. In the last couple of years, I've kind of gotten into it with my son and. Uh, Watch that tactical bassing. I, don't know I love that. that channel. That's one of my favorite dude, YouTube channels. Those dudes, man, I've learned more about fishing. Period. From those guys, than you know, it's it's unbelievable. Like, it really watch, is. You you want to learn about braid? Just watch their braid video. You yeah. Learn, you know their leader, their braid to leader <laughs> stuff is you know just really really good. They can sit and talk about, and I, I I've brought this up on podcast before. Is check out tactical bassing's page. Eventually, we're going to become friends because I've talked about them enough, but. Um, they, I mean, they can sit there and talk about a bone colored jerk bait for like an hour and a half. Like, and it's all good information. It's all stuff that you're like, wow, that's really. What's like I told somebody, you know, when you get in their finesse stuff is really similar to trout fishing. A lot yeah. of their finesse stuff. And then their power fishing stuff is very similar to reds. Yeah. You know, you can take a lot out of it. Of what they're doing. I wish. And I think C.A. Richardson, he does a lot. He's got some good videos. Yeah. But those guys are very, very technical with their stuff. I wish somebody would come out with, you know, something that technical on the saltwater side. I haven't really seen it. Yeah, I know. I, I would love to do that, but I'm just not that technical. Yeah, I feel not, like force, I've got to force it. <laughs> I sit here and try to make these, you know, these videos talking about soft plastics. And I'm just like, golly, how do they talk about that stuff for that long? <laughs> I'm like, they've talked about two swim baits for like 45 minutes. I can't talk about eight. Yeah, for it's like, here's a gold spoon. Throw it out there and retreat. <laughs> when you feel the bite, set the hook. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, anyone um, that wants to come check you out can come into Eastern Eastern Outfitters, correct? And, and see. Yeah, you. yeah, we're still open. Yeah, Sweet. we're still. Are y'all doing curbside, or can you get in there and check the stuff? No, out? we're still. We're in Pender County. You can come on in. Right on, right on. That's uh, risky, but I like it. I like it. I... Well, you know, we talked about it. We I haven't really seen anybody more than ten people in the store since since this happened. You yeah. Know, it's just, um, you know, it seems like people come in, they know what they're looking for, they get it and they leave. And, and y'all, y'all have got a ton of stuff, but you've got a big building too, so you're spread out nicely. It's not like Pretty spread some out, other yeah. areas where they're real, real tight. It's kind and, of unique. You know, we've got guns, we've got kayaks, we've got a, a lot of clothes, we got Afco, you yeah, know, mar you know, marshware, and uh, we got all, we got a lot of stuff. Heck yeah! And we've got a marine store, you know, at the end of our building, which kind of turned into a little miniature West Marine, so. Like out here in the middle of nowhere, you know. uh, I know, right on seventeen. Yeah, right on seventeen. If, so. you, if you've passed uh, Lowe's on the way north, you've gone too far. You've gone too far. <laughs> yeah. Well, is there anything uh, that you can leave listeners to to encourage them about fishing around here, or, or any t tips or tricks, little last minute things you want to want to leave anybody with? You know, I think what's interesting, you know, I grew up fishing around Wrightsville Beach, and you know, that's kind of a clear water fishery. And then when you come up here. You know, your topsail is kind of unique because you've got really two different fisheries here. You know, the north end is more, you know, dirtier water, I would call it. So you kind of use different colors up there, more gold yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then down the south end is really clear, you know, kind of go with, uh, with you know, more natural stuff. Yeah. Down, I, some clear stuff, you know, uh, opening night, stuff like that. So it's kind of, you know, when somebody says, well, you know, what what bait do you recommend? I kind of have to go, well, you know, where are you fishing at? Yeah, for sure. I think that's yeah. one of the cool things about Topsail is how diverse yeah. it is as a fishery. Yeah. It's, it cool. offers a lot within just a, a few miles. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So uh, it's a great place to fish. Yeah, right on. Well, yeah. Joe, thanks for coming on, man. I uh, I right, appreciate man. it. And, and we'll have to – we need to get out and fish together and, and do, do yeah. some more podcasts. I think it'd be fun to do one together, you know, with the change of each season, talking about tackle and talking about okay. – um, you know, preparation for the season. So yeah, sure. Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Sure. Uh, I hate we couldn't be live, but I just, uh, it's been getting dropped like crazy. Like what, I guess what happens is no one's out eating no, or doing anything. Everyone's at their house at eight o'clock. Uh, and the so bandwidth. the bandwidth, I mean, even our, our, we're trying to watch Netflix at night and like seven, eight o'clock it drops around here. So I think uh, it's okay. spectrum too. I don't know if you, if y'all have spectrum or what, but it's, I apologize to our listeners too that we're not live, but it's uh, it's just I think the safest play is for us to pre-record and. and put no, it up, okay. So. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I had the problem at my house last time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, well, cool. Okay. I'm going to switch over here and say thank you all to everyone that, that was checking this out. If you whether you were watching um, on Facebook or YouTube um, or listening on on a podcast or as a podcast, uh, we just want to thank you all for for checking out the show and supporting us. Um, we, we love creating this content and, or I love creating this content. Cameron does too. 
uh, and we just we want to keep doing it. So so thank you all for supporting us through watching watching these episodes. Go check out that that Facebook group. Um, another big thing you can do to help us is if you're listening on any podcast platform right now, just uh, just give us a five star rating if you think we're five star worthy, um, and leave a little review. That really helps us show up higher in those searches on the podcast platforms, um, which would just be awesome. So thank you all so much. Thank you again, Joe. Um, look right, forward to, to talking again soon, and uh, we'll see y'all in the next episode. Okay. Thanks, man. Later.